to the United States now, where Kevin McCarthy cemented himself in the history books as the first US Speaker of the House of Representatives to be ousted. The House is now sitting in limbo after his removal by hardline members of his own party, who voted against him after he struck a deal with Senate Democrats to fund government agencies. Speaking at the White House on Wednesday, Mr Biden called for an end to divisions. We have strong disagreements, but we need to stop seeing each other as enemies. We need to talk to one another, listen to one another, work with one another, and we can do that. I join with Minority Leader Jeffries uh, in saying that our Republican colleagues uh, remain committed to working in a bipartisan fashion. We are prepared to do it as well for the good of the American people. And the president was asked if he had any advice for the new speaker. He, he smiled and he gave this rather cryptic response. That's above my pay grade. So on Friday, Donald Trump endorsed staunch Conservative Congressman Jim Jordan's bid to become the next Speaker of the House of Representatives. Meanwhile, attacks continue to grow after President Biden's announcement of building a new border wall in Texas. Let's bring in Peter Chowka, who's veteran political analyst and contributor to AmericanThinker.com. And also we're joined by Tom Scotto, an expert in American politics at Glasgow University. Uh, Peter, it seems that Kevin McCarthy's betrayal was to have struck a deal with the Democrats to keep the US government open for, for just a little while longer. Isn't that a depressing reflection of the divisiveness of UK politics, even within the Republican Party? Well, I don't think it's exactly accurate to say that uh, Kevin McCarthy was removed from his job as Speaker of the House by hardline uh, Republicans. Actually, only eight Republicans, led by Matt Gates, who is certainly a rogue outlier, they challenged him. So eight voted to remove him. Uh, 204 Republicans voted to keep him. That's 96 percent of the Republicans in the House of Representatives. And what made the difference was what uh, destroyed uh, Speaker McCarthy was every single Democrat member of the House, 208 of them, voted to remove him. And on the face of it, this would seem a bit strange because it was in the weekend before that McCarthy reached across the aisle to his Democrat colleagues and struck a deal to keep the government open in their budget. Budget agreement, But I think that this reflects the attempt by the Democrats to uh, further this chaos in the Republican Party and the division in the Republican Party because they think the perceived chaos that will now engulf the House of Representatives of the, as they look for a new leader and probably fumble will position the Republicans very poorly for next year's uh, major national elections for the Congress and the President of the United States. Is that your reading of the situation? Tom? Well, I, I think that the challenge is, is that the uh, the majority of the Republican uh, of the of the House of Representatives is, is very slim. And anytime you have a slim majority, it's very, very hard to keep your caucus in line. I think uh, Prime Minister Major learned that in the late 1990s in the United Kingdom. It's very similar to the situation uh, we have. There are the re- the um, the Republicans are, um, you know, ideologically divided. One of the interesting things I think coming up is Steve Scalise um, and and Jim Jordan. If you look, at, if you want to speak about Ukraine, um, uh, Jordan is very skeptical of, of additional aid to Ukraine. He wants, uh, you know, to try to broker some sort of Russian Ukraine peace agreement. Whereas Scalise has been much more hawkish. Trad- keeping in line with more traditional Republicans. So you have a lot of divides going on within the Republican Party, um, coupled with a slim majority. And you have a a very small, I agree with your previous speaker, a very small, um, you know, number of Republicans um, you know, the, the, the MAGA Republicans make them the sort of Trump aligned Republicans. They really fall into two, two camps. One is they want to sort of, uh, bring it all down and reconstitute, you know, American society in their mold. But it seems like a small minority of Republicans want to just burn things down. And, and that has what has sort of bitten McCarthy, even, even those who didn't agree with the deal McCarthy brokered right understood or at least a majority of republicans understood that you know doing this would would you know would cause chaos just for the sake of causing chaos and that 
and 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 this plays right into okay. you know the Democrats' hand. It, it's a great day to be a Democratic fundraiser, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, partisan. You know, so it might be a, a small number, Peter. But do you, do you think there is anyone who can unite the Republicans, or do you think the next speaker will face a lot of the same issues? Well, of course, we're in the midst of the uh, presidential campaign. We haven't had a primary or caucus yet, but they will be occurring in several months. And former President Donald Trump is running away so far to this point with support. He probably has about 50 percent support of the Republican voters. But uh, his opposition is splintered. And if he can maintain that, he will win the primaries and very likely win the nomination unless he's checkmated by any of these uh, legal entanglements that face him. He's under indictment, as you know, for 91 uh, felonies in four different cases, plus this civil case in New York. So he's facing a very uphill battle there. And I think predictions of him actually getting the nomination and being elected president, which some people are trying to make now, uh, are really flawed predictions. I don't think we can, uh, I don't think anybody has an accurate crystal ball at this point. But uh, your previous speaker, Tom, is absolutely correct that uh, the Republican Party is divided and uh, again, I have to say that this uh, the Democrats have tried to foster this with uh, attacking Trump as soon as he was uh, elected president as being part of Russia collusion that was proven false. And then the two impeachments. And this is, I think, along the same lines, unfortunately. Tom, do you think there is a candidate for speaker out there to replace McCarthy that can offer enough to the more extreme Republicans that would actually buy their, their loyalty more than? For, for just a, a few weeks or a few months? It's going to be a challenge. I think they will eventually. It may, you know, again, much like when McCarthy was elected, take, you know, 10 or, 10 or more votes. Uh, but I think they will eventually uh, settle on a candidate uh, if for any reason that they're, you know, the key fundraisers, unlike the um, the the Speaker of the House of Commons, the House of House of Representatives Speaker is a highly partisan figure. He's prominent in fundraising. He or she is prominent in fundraising and so forth. And so not only does the business of the House not get done, but the business of Republican fundraising for the upcoming campaigns is um, on hold or, or at least stymied by this sort of division. And I think, if anything, that will motivate them. Um, potentially to try to settle on a leader event eventually. OK, Tom Scotto from Glasgow University and Peter Chauka from AmericanThinker.com.